Hi, I'm Marcus Hutzel. In this video, I'm going to show you my lighting setup here in my home office that I use for work from home meetings as well as my YouTube studio using Apple HomeKit so that everything is efficient and quick when I need to get to having a meeting or recording a video. If you're just starting out building a YouTube studio or even just a virtual home office, somewhere you need to be on camera and you want it to look professional and put together, chances are you're thinking about lighting, or at least you probably should be thinking about lighting. And for me, I really want my office and studio space to be as efficient as possible. So I've utilized Apple HomeKit devices like Philips Hue and some other brand smart bulbs and smart outlets almost entirely here in my home office so I can get my lighting turned on and off quickly. Because those impromptu online meetings or the creative juices to record a video can't always wait on me to walk around my office, turn on this lamp, that other lamp, these decorative lights, my backlight, set colors, come back to my computer, check everything, get up, go change it if I don't like it, turn on my key light so people can see my face. I don't want to do all of that. I want to be able to control everything from this chair, and I'm able to do that like this. Turn off office. And all of my lighting turns off, and I can then quickly get back to my scene by telling Siri, record HomeKit. And the scene that I created for this video comes back up, all the lighting turns its proper colors, everything turns on as needed, and I'm back up and running. Now, I chose Apple HomeKit over some of the other smart home options because I am, and most likely forever will be, an Apple iPhone user, and this makes it easy to access all of my smart lighting around my office and the rest of my home. Mainly because I don't have to open a specific app, I don't have to unlock my device because Apple HomeKit is available from the iOS lock screen by just a quick swipe down, and then it's right there, and I can access pretty much any room in my house, including my office here. Or just like I showed you, I can just hold down the power button on my iPhone, tell Siri a specific word, and then that word is one of the names of my scenes, and she'll change all the lighting based on what I've set for that scene. Like this one, I have one called Batcave. Batcave. And this changes a few things, turns off my key light, changes some of the colors of the bulbs in the background. And then of course I can go back to my main scene, record. And continue this video. I have one called Office Bright, Office Bright, which turns on all the lighting in my office and makes it really bright, but that's too bright for this video. Let's turn that off, record HomeKit. There. And I am just not a big fan of talking to my house. I don't like the Amazon Alexa option. I don't have any of those devices. I don't want things listening to me if I don't intentionally activate it. That's why I have to activate Siri on my iPhone by holding down the power button. And using HomeKit means that I don't actually have to speak out loud at all. I can just use the on-screen controls here on my iPhone. I'm a pretty quiet person and I really do not like having to shout across the room to activate some sort of smart speaker or microphone, then tell that device to turn the lights on or off. I just think it's disruptive, especially in an environment where there are multiple people having to shout over someone or shout over the TV show you're watching. It's not for me. I like quiet. I like single sound sources at a time and using HomeKit can be absolutely silent if I want it to be, and I don't disrupt other things going on or other people in the household. Anyway, in addition to not having to shout across the room, using Apple HomeKit and my iPhone, I also just don't have to walk around my office and turn on these multiple lights. I don't have to use all of my proprietary remote controls, like this one and this one and this one all the time, although I still need them and do have to use them here and there to adjust certain things and settings on some of the lights, like the color temperature or the brightness. But putting everything on HomeKit really simplifies my office setup and just lets me create visual looks while sitting here looking at my camera and looking at those changes in real time. Now, I'm doing this with a few different types of HomeKit devices. Number one, Philips Hue light bulbs, mainly this full color Philips Hue light bulb behind my left shoulder in that lamp right over there, which provides a lot of color for several different camera views. 
I have a Philips Hue white ambience bulb behind my desk over there, which I don't have on right now. It's not full color, it's just one of the white ambience so it can do color temperature from you know 3200 Kelvin to about 5600 Kelvin. And I use it for just general lighting ambience in the office when I'm not filming videos. However, if you're thinking about setting up a YouTube studio using Philips Hue or other smart light bulbs, I'd be sure to watch my other two videos on this topic as you may get some unwanted video flicker in your video that you can't edit out. So be sure to watch those videos first before you start building a studio around Wi-Fi smart bulbs. You've been warned. And of course you also have to have the Philips Hue hub, but since I have a lot of Philips Hue bulbs around my house, the hub was worth it for me. Now, back in that corner, way over there is a less expensive IKEA Tradfree series smart bulb. Although it also requires the purchase of the IKEA Tradfree hub, so keep that in mind, but the hub does allow full control of that light natively through HomeKit without having to open the IKEA app. And the second device I use are simple smart outlets that only turn the outlet on or off. Therefore, they can only turn the light that's plugged into them on or off. These can't dim and they can't change the color of any attached bulbs or lights. But I have a ton of these around my office and around the rest of the house actually for various things. Here in my office, I have about five of these things. I have one for my key light. I have one for my backlight. I have one for this lamp behind me, that one right there. I have one for controlling these vintage style Edison lights behind me. I have one that can turn on and off these quasar tubes that were in my brighter scene that I have mounted above my windows. So the combination of smart bulbs and the smart outlets are really how I have automated my home office and YouTube studio using Apple HomeKit. I've had good experience with these Maros brand smart plugs. They work natively with Apple HomeKit, which means you don't even have to open up a third party app. You just set them up with HomeKit directly. So once I installed all of these, obviously, as you've seen, I can say things like turn off key light and HomeKit turns off the smart outlet connected to my key light. Let's turn it back on. Turn on key light. But again, to change the color temperature or intensity of my key light, I still have to use the remote, but I usually just have my key light set to where I want it for most meetings and recordings. So I don't have to use the remote too often or I can turn on and off those vintage Edison style lights, turn off Edison lights, and so on and so forth. Let's turn those back on. Turn on Edison lights. So one important thing to note is that these smart outlets also have a physical button on them where you can always just push the button and turn the outlet on or off. And for my key light, and those quasar tubes, I actually just mounted these two smart outlets where I can still reach the physical button from my desk chair. So I don't always have to use the HomeKit app to turn those two light sources on or off. I can just manually turn those on or off real quickly by reaching up under here, clicking the button on the smart outlet. So my key light is always at arm's length as well as those quasar tubes. Yeah, turn those off. Now, the Quasar tubes and those vintage style Edison lights, I also installed a manual dimmer between the smart outlet and the lights so that I can set the brightness of those lights because I don't need them at full power most of the time. But those particular dimmers are just manual dimmers. So these specific dimmers cannot be controlled via HomeKit, but I wanted them in line so that when I turn on the Quasars, turn on Quasar tubes that I can then just reach over here and kind of use the manual dimmer to dim them up and down. Remembering that I have to then go back and manually set the dimmer because if I turn the outlet on or off, the tubes will just come back on at the level that the manual dimmer is set. So a little bit less functionality, but just helps me keep the brightness level where I want it. Turn off quasars. But for those Edison lights, I found a happy medium of the exposure that I want for camera as well as just general ambience in the room. So I usually never really need to change the dimmer value on those Edison lights. But if I did, I'd still have to get up and walk over here to where the dimmer is and change them. But I just leave them alone most of the time. So yes, these smart outlets obviously only turn on and off the power coming out of this outlet. So again, all they can do is basically turn on or off the items plugged into them. But luckily that's all I really need. My current key light is a Neewer 480 bicolor panel light. Again, it also has its own dedicated remote control where I can adjust the brightness or color temperature of that light. 
So if I need to change the color brightness, I just keep this remote in a little drawer over here under my desk. But luckily with this particular newer light, it remembers its brightness and Kelvin value when you turn it off and back on or when you disconnect it from power and then reconnect it. And that's great. So when I use my HomeKit outlet to turn it on or off, it comes back on to the same brightness and color temperature and I don't have to always grab the remote. And it's similar for my backlights. I have that light plugged into another smart outlet, of course, and that's actually a standard Newer 660 model. And that model doesn't have any wireless controls. The brightness and color temperature adjustments are only with physical dials on the back of the light. So if I do want to change the color temperature of that light, I do have to get up and go manually change it. But I usually just have it set at about 5600 Kelvin and just enough to provide this side backlight here on the right side of my face. Then I can just turn the outlet on or off, of course, turn off backlight and the backlight turns off easy. Turn on backlight. And this lamp behind me, that one right there, if you've watched any of my other videos, the vast majority of those videos, that light is like a blue or a purple color. And that's because I only have a simple purple LED bulb in that lamp. This one actually, usually, this is not a smart light. It's not controllable. It's just a purple bulb that I got at Home Depot years back. And it was always just purple when I activated the smart outlet attached to that lamp. But recently I bought an Aperture B7C bulb to go in that lamp instead so I could also change the color and so I could film without being worried about any video flicker because the Aperture B7C bulbs won't produce flicker in your videos. But of course, Apple HomeKit cannot control the Aperture B7C bulb natively. So that's the downside of having aperture bulbs. You have to still boot up the Citus Link app on your phone. Wait for it. And this is why I haven't gone full aperture uh, lights in my office because I have to wait on this app to boot up. And as you can see, it takes a second, but once it's booted up, I can then, you know, change the color. So we'll go back to that, but again, not natively controlled with HomeKit. I cannot control that bulb's color or intensity with HomeKit. I have to use a Citus Link app, but I can still turn off the entire lamp, turn off purple lamp, and it will still turn the lamp on or off as needed. Turn on purple lamp. But luckily the B7C bulb also comes back on to its same color and intensity when you restore power to the outlet. Of course, then I have tons of scenes set up in Apple HomeKit, and this is a great way to save lighting scenes if I'm recording something so I can come back to it and refilm a portion if I flubbed a line. Now, I still do have a bunch of manual switches also mounted under my desk to control some of the smaller things here at my desk, and I talk about those switches in another video, which I'll post a link to below. But I really like the other options of using smart bulbs and smart outlets so that I can utilize Apple HomeKit to build and save lighting scenes here in my home office slash studio. And again, just a warning, you can run into visual problems trying to film while using Philips Hue bulbs or other smart bulbs like Ikea, but there are ways you can still use Philips Hue and other smart bulbs with your camera. You just need to do some testing and maybe check out my other two videos on that topic. But again, using Apple HomeKit in this way makes things so much more quick to turn on or off all of my lights, change colors, and limits how many individual remotes that I need to use, and it limits how many apps I need to open just to access all of those devices. It's quick, it's easy, it's available right here on my home screen. I can go to my office right there, and I can access all the lights or any of the scenes in my office without having to boot up any other app without having to actually unlock my device. It's just there and ready to go. And I use this system every day for virtual meetings and of course, recording my videos. And I think that's it. I just thought I'd share my efficient lighting setup using Apple HomeKit here in my home office and YouTube studio. It makes my virtual life a little more simple. So until next time, later. Turn off office. <laughs>